Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and understanding the coefficient of variation using Microsoft Excel. I have loaded in this worksheet fictitious data, and I have an ID variable, and then a variable for year one through year four. The unit of analysis for these variables is days in a year, the number of days in a year. In this particular case, it would be the number of days in a year where this corresponding participant, identified here by uh, a number, felt that they effectively coped with their symptoms. So, for example, for the participant indicated by 1001, in year one, this participant felt like they effectively coped with the symptoms for 301 days. For participant 2, 12 days, 3, 245 days, and so on. And we have this data for year 1 all the way through year 4. Now, of course, here of interest to us would be, is there an increase or a decrease in number of days when the participant felt they could effectively cope with the symptoms? But also, we could be interested in the dispersion of scores, which oftentimes, of course, will represent using the standard deviation. So although we're interested in trends, whether the number of days increased or decreased, we would also be interested in how different the dispersion of scores was from participant to participant. Now that can be a challenge in this example, because as we can see, for example, with record one, that all these values are above 300. So we know the mean is going to be fairly high in comparison to, say, record four, where all the values are below 25. So in this case, the standard deviation may not be an ideal statistic to interpret. Rather, we may want to use a measure of dispersion that factors in the mean. And the coefficient of variation does just that. It's the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. So to calculate the coefficient of variation, first we'll calculate the standard deviation and the mean. And in Excel, that's fairly straightforward. For standard deviation, because this is a sample, I'm going to use stdev.s, sample, standard deviation. And then I'm going to select cell B2 through E2, so all four years, and enter that in. And we see that's 21. And then I'm going to autofill this function all the way down. So we can see we have all these standard deviations for the 10 participants. And then for the mean or the average, we'll use the average function. And again, select the same cells, enter that function in the cell and then autofill down for all of the records. So we can see by taking a look at the standard deviations that record 3 has the highest standard deviation and record 4 has the lowest standard deviation. But again this measure of dispersion doesn't take into account the mean. So let's go ahead and calculate the coefficient of variation and again, this is the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. So it's going to be equal sign standard deviation divided by mean. And you can see for this first record, it's 6%. The coefficient of variation can be expressed in a variety of ways. Percent is one of the ways we can express it. And that is the method I chose to use here. So I'm going to autofill this function all the way down. And we can now see that when we factor in the mean, that if we look at this record four, for instance, that had the lowest standard deviation, now we can see the coefficient of variation is 41%, which is higher than the coefficients of variation for records five through 10. And we can see that the lowest coefficient of variation is for record one, 6%. But 
the standard deviation for that record was 21, which is higher than the standard deviation for record 4 and records 9 and 10. So this gives us another perspective on dispersion because we're taking into account the mean value. There are a few important items to recognize, however, when considering using the coefficient of variation versus the standard deviation. One is that the standard deviation uses the unit of analysis. It's expressed in the same unit of analysis that we have here in the variables. In this case, number of days that the participant effectively coped with the symptoms. So here this is 21 days. This is the average number of days that any particular observation deviated from the mean. So it's expressed in days. That makes it easy to interpret. Coefficient of variation is dimensionless. It's simply the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. So we have 6%, 71%, 80%, and so on. That's not expressed in days but rather it's the percent generated when you take the standard deviation and divide it by the mean. Also we must consider the type of data that we can use when we're calculating the coefficient of variation. The values here in this case are expressed in days, so 301 days, 12 days, and so on. This means that the level of measurement for these variables is ratio, is at the ratio level. And that is the only level of measurement where we can use the coefficient of variation. If we were using the interval level of measurement, we could not interpret the coefficient of variation. Now the interval level of measurement is similar to the ratio level of measurement. The only difference is that the ratio level of measurement has a true zero, meaning if you have a zero score in one of these cells, that represents an absence of whatever you're measuring. On the interval level of measurement, a zero is not a true zero. You can have a score of zero, but it doesn't represent an absence of whatever you're measuring. A common example of interval versus ratio is the Fahrenheit scale for measuring temperature. You can have zero degrees on the Fahrenheit scale, you can have an observation of zero, but that doesn't represent an absence of heat. So Fahrenheit is an interval level of measurement. If you wanted to measure temperature using a ratio level of measurement, you would use something like Kelvin. In the Kelvin scale, zero represents no heat. It's an absence of the construct that you're measuring. So looking back here to our example, if we have zero days, that represents no days. That's an absence of days. So this is ratio. And therefore interpreting the coefficient of variation would be appropriate and could be useful under certain circumstances, particularly under these circumstances where we have mean scores that vary quite a bit. That is a common reason to use the coefficient of variation. Another reason we would use it, and it, I don't have it illustrated in this case, but would be in a case where the uni units of analysis are different for each record, right? So here we have for participant 1001, these are days in a year, but say that for record four, for instance, these represented weeks instead of days. In that instance, the standard deviation would be measuring two different units of analysis. This would be number of days for record one, and this would be number of weeks for record four. And in that instance, the coefficient of variation, because it's dimensionless, would allow us to compare the two in a more straightforward manner. So if you have different units of analysis and or different means, and you're working with ratio level data, 
the coefficient of variation can be a useful statistic to interpret to compare the amount of dispersion in the values. I hope you found this video on calculating and understanding the coefficient of variation using Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.